Welcome back to Outnumbered. Well, new polling out of the battleground state of Iowa showing a shift in the 2016 presidential race. Donald Trump surging in the Des Moines Register. Bloomberg Politics poll with 23 percent among likely Republican caucus goers in Iowa. Now, this is a huge increase from poll results in May when he was only at 4 percent. He's followed by Dr. Ben Carson, who went from 10 percent in the previous poll to 18 percent now. Those gains coming at the expense of the other candidates, like Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, who was once the GOP leader in Iowa, falling nine points to 8 percent. Meantime, a Monmouth University poll of likely Iowa Republican caucus goers finds Carson and Trump tied for the top spot and Walker down 15 points from the previous poll. All right, you said that you were a Jeb guy, yep. Congressman, but what's up with this big poll drop? Walker has really devoted everything he's got to Iowa. He has spent, I think, the most days of any candidate in Iowa. So why the drop? Well, look, I like Scott Walker a lot. I think the concern is, I mean, the 14th Amendment discussion, he hasn't really had a position. He had uh, migrating oh, had positions. Yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> and I think, I admire political courage. And political courage to me is, even in a primary, this is why I admire Jeb, in mm -hmm. a primary saying, hey, this may not be the most popular position for a primary, but it's what I believe and it's the right thing to do. And I think, you know, Scott had that. Uh, Governor Walker had that. But I think as he's kind of shifted his positions a little bit, or at least it's perceived that way, people have said, well, look, I like him, but maybe somebody like a Donald Trump or a Ben Carson uh, is, is more my style. And they are two outsiders, Kennedy, Trump, yeah. and Carson. Yes. But you look at the underperformance of the other candidates. Jeb, he's had a number of positions on a couple different things. Over yep. the weekend, Walker talked about a wall in Canada. Sometimes I look at this stuff and I go, what are they thinking? I think that's fantastic. A 5,500 mile oh, wall. Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, what we should be doing is committing trillions of dollars to a problem we don't have. Great job, Scott. And they've said that if Walker, if he doesn't have a win in Iowa, it's as good as a loss. This is the race certainly for the outsiders. I know we're going to talk about this a little later, but congressional Republicans have very low marks from the public right now. You're seeing that bear out in the race. You know, Cruz has had a little bit of a boost, but it's the outsiders. Even Carly Fiorina has more than doubled her support in Iowa since the last poll. She has gone yeah. from two to five percent. Sandra, it's not even just that they can't get any traction and because mm -hmm. I think they're not doing themselves any favors. And by them, I mean a lot of the establishment mm -hmm. candidates. Trump just sucks up all the oxygen in the room when he talks. And obviously that hurting Jeb. Uh, you said you're a Jeb guy when we started off the show. He's facing a lot of problems, a lot of headwinds when it comes to Iowa. Who do you think or what do you think is the most, what's taking away from his race the most? Well, this isn't very different from 2012. It's a little different, but in 2012, I mean, at the end of the day, we all kind of knew it was going to be Mitt Romney, but you had Michelle Bachman, you had Herman Kang, you had Newt Gingrich, and everybody kind of had their time in the sun. Now, I'm not saying that's exactly the case here, but, you know, Trump, there's two ways to come to power. One is to stir people's insecurities and be negative and talk about how bad everything is, and one is to give people a vision for where they can be in the future. 1979, Ronald Reagan won, not by reinforcing to everybody how bad America was in 1979, but by talking about a shining city on a hill. All the president does is bring people along. We need a president that can unite people but the thing with Trump, and not divide them. Yeah, the thing with Trump, he's not beholden to anybody. Yeah. The donors or any super PACs, it's apparently his own money. Yeah. I would say about the, you know, the wall on Canada, how much property would he have to seize? How many <laughs> eminent domain fights <laughs> oh, to right. get into the building? The, 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 the Great Wall of Trump. Imagine, but, but to, yeah. to move your it, it, moment in the sun analogy a little bit further, a lot of the candidates in 2012, they had their moment yeah. in the sun and they turned into raisins. Yeah. But Trump seems to be a solar panel. He's got some staying power. <laughs> it, I think it's, panel. Isn't it just because he doesn't want to apologize and we're so used to a president who keeps apologizing? I mean, I think that's the big difference. And you talk about a clear vision. That's what these other candidates are lacking. Yeah. I can't follow yeah. what Jeb's positions are because he but keeps changing right, them. Right. And the Quinnipiac poll, though, I mean, Sanders still beats Trump, though, I have to right. say. Yeah. That poll just coming out last week. So and more new polls. She's been dead right. for about eight years. More new okay, polls this old. time showing Americans are not too happy with the direction of our country. A total of 71% of voters dissatisfied with the way things are going in the nation today, including 41% who are very dissatisfied. Meantime, if you need more proof, Americans are fed up with their leaders on Capitol Hill. 81% disapprove of the way Republicans are handling their job in Congress, and things not looking so great on the other side of the aisle either. 
the disapproval rating of le Democratic lawmakers in Washington. Look at this number, 61, 66 <laughs> percent. Good God, it keeps ticking up even while I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> Very volatile. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the thing is, we had this hedge fund guy, Sandra, uh, mm -hmm. Jim Chanos, he called Enron. Uh, he said, you know, China's going to crack up. He's just out now today in the media saying the Democrats are, are the name of the game right now. They can campaign saying, oh, the economy's great. Gas prices are down. Mortgage rates are down. The economy's, you know, the GDP is, you need CPR. Yeah. But he's out there saying, you know what? It's the catbird seat is owned by the Democrats Well, this, right now. this is a reflection of how people feel about leadership in this country now. A lot of people feel like they're being lied to and misled on a daily basis. I think that's why, um, well, you're seeing a few things that are happening in in the polls right now. Uh, the other thing, though, is I always go back to this business unfriendly environment that has been created by the current administration in this country. I talk to, and you as well, Liz, talk to CEOs of large corporations as well as a bit small business owners sometimes that employ five to 40 people. And people are not happy with what's happening as far as taxes and rules and regulations. It has just become so difficult yeah, you know, to thrive a business in this point, country. You know, I was looking at the Democratic platform going mm -hmm. under John F. Kennedy through 2004. I mean, the tedious, and you're a student of politics and history, Andrea, the tedious orgy of self-righteousness coming under the Obama administration, that it's all government all the time, to Sandra's point. Mm -hmm. When back then, JFK was saying, cut tax taxes, smaller government, that's what Al Gore and Clinton were saying, get off the welfare state, 1976, get yeah. the IRS out of our lives, it's the Democrats who are in an identity crisis, right? And I think the American public realizes that the party of yeah. JFK and even the party of Bill Clinton is gone. Right. Right. It's gone in a more progressive way, and even though Democrats can say we've restored the economy, we've done all these great things. Uh, our nickel on our they can't I don't say think that, that people, right. it, well, they can say it, but I think the difference is, and you guys would know best, people don't feel it. Yeah, with a record number of people outside of work, Kennedy, with a record number of and people I'm seeing get to our lucky yes. skyrocket. Right. Well, let me get to the lucky guy. They can say that, but with with a big fat footnote of $18 trillion yeah. of yeah. So, an open fire hydrant of yeah. spending, S right? Sandra made a good point. She said they feel they've been lied to. They have been lied to. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are told every day that Social Security is fine, Medicare is fine. 71 percent of spending in this country every day is stuff that Congress doesn't control. But we're not going out and telling people that. Instead, because of the next election, not the next generation, because of the next election, we're too, too worried about having a grown-up discussion about Social right. Security. Look at Chris Christie and the Huckabee exchange when Huckabee said, well, yeah, just but that's, in members. That, that's it truly is, is all like about cyanide. It is. But, you know, but you talk about, you talk about political courage, Congressman, yeah. but which one of these presidential candidates is actually standing up. I mean, Chris Christie is to some degree, but who is saying we have to stop this entitlement bubble? We cannot sustain it. We cannot keep borrowing money yeah. to lift up this entitlement state. And also, if you actually reform that, maybe that might help with the type of illegal immigration that, right. uh, that people are turned off by. Sorry, Liz. No, that was fine. No, I get it. But, you know, they don't want to have a Dan Ross Sankowski 1986 moment where you have senior citizens, you know, accosting what? these politicians in parking lots. Yeah. So, you know, so CrossFit really is the now. third rail. <laughs> but you know what? We're They're asking strong. 18 and 19 year old kids to die for our country every day. We have right. to be willing to die politically for the same cause. I have taken votes that I thought would cost me my career, and I'll do it at any moment because to me, if a 19 year old's going to die for his country, I have to be willing to give up my but career. Congressman, for the same also, cause. that poll shows that Congress as a whole is viewed negatively, right. but people don't see their individual congressmen yeah. like you. Mm in an unfavorable light. They actually see when you poll, for example, your name, I bet you poll much better in Illinois. And I will, hope so. you, will, will, you, will you design your office in the style of Downton Abbey? <laughs> it's just right. blue. It's Air Force blue. Good answer. Good answer. Well, next up, one university's class about 9-11 literature sparking outrage among people who say it pushes sympathy for terrorists and office, offers zero perspective from the 9-11 victims' families. So, we ask you this, should the course be canceled? Well, you're gonna hear what the school has to say. And right after the show, head to the web for outnumbered O time, overtime. I was, you know, OT baby. Harris Fox, <laughs> OT baby and Sandra. Log on to foxnews.com slash outnumbered. Click the OT overtime. Sell time. it, baby. You got it, Liz. Send us your questions, comments. Tell us what topic you wanna hear more about. Take to Twitter, Facebook, jump on the live chat. We're here, we're listening to you. Bam.